welcome to News Now on TV360. A recent attack by suspected members of the Islamist sect Boko Haram has left no fewer than 540 houses completely destroyed in the villages of Kubi and Watu in Minchika local government area of Adama State. Reports say quite a number of persons were killed in the attacks, which occurred yesterday in the two villages. Eyewitnesses say the insurgents overran the villages in the early hours of yesterday while residents were asleep and went about burning uh, houses around. The eyewitnesses lamented that many of those killed were trapped in their homes, resulting in their being burned to death. Meanwhile, reports have emerged that 300 Boko Haram militants have been arrested in Cameroon while seeking asylum there. Cameroon's defense uh, ministry, who disclosed uh, this, said they were currently being interrogated in the country. President Goodluck Jonathan has conferred different categories of national awards to Nigerians who have distinguished themselves through service to uh, the country. About 62 persons backed the award for Officer of the Federal Republic, 63 others badged the OON, while 50 received members of the Order of the Federal uh, Republic Awards, among other categories. Among those honored at the ceremony which held at the International Conference Center Abuja were taxi driver Ime Uswa, a traffic warden Corporal Solomon Dada, and a steward Ono Isaac, who have displayed exemplary services. Now, among the special recipient of the national award is the man who designed the Nigerian national flag. Pataiwa Kinkumi, for a very long time, has been neglected by successive administrations in the country. But the old man can now smile broadly because apart from the award of officer of the Order of the Federal Republic he got, President Goodluck Jonathan has now placed Pa Akinkumi on a lifetime salary as special assistant to the president. Pa Akinkumi designed the Nigerian flag in 1959 when he was barely 23. At the time, he was a student studying in London. His design of the national flag was adjudged the best among other entries for the prestigious national flag design competition held at the university campus. The then Nigerian High Commissioner to the United Kingdom, M.A. Martins, liked the design and passed a proposal to adopt it as the national flag of Nigeria. Well, we can only say congratulations to Pa King Kumi. I actually read a lot about him when I was in secondary school. So congratulations to him. Now, this is surely something that would uh, put a broad smile on the face of Nasser El Rufai, Nigeria's former minister of the Federal Capital Territory. A federal high court has ordered that the State Security Service, otherwise known as SSS, tender an apology to the former minister and to pay him the sum of 2 million naira in damages for lawful detention. El Rufai, during the November 16, 2013 governorship election in Anambra State, had been detained by officials of the SSS and prevented from participating in the elections in which he had come to serve as an observer. On the morning of the governorship election last November, men of Nigeria State Security Service, SSS, had stormed the hotel El Rufai was lodging and barricaded it, from, barricaded it, preventing him, of course, from leaving the hotel to observe the election. Malam El Rufai is an official of the All Progressives uh, Congress, APC, and had come to Anambra State to, according to him, monitor the election as an accredited monitor for his party, which fielded a candidate for the election. The SSS men practically detained El Rufai in his hotel until the election was over. After the incident, El Rufai had taken the matter to court to seek redress. Presiding Justice Ibrahim Baturi Gafai, while delivering his judgment, held that the SSS has no statutory powers under the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria or under any Nigerian law to detain El Rufai without showing cause to a court of competent jurisdiction. The court gave an order for the SSS to publish an apology in two national dailies for the unlawful and unconstitutional violation of his liberty. Now, despite containing the Ebola virus disease, health officials in Nigeria still work round the clock to ensure the countries continue to remain Ebola-free. The country has kept its borders open but has now stepped up screening at its busiest seaport in Lagos, health officials now conduct Ebola screening on every crew member of vessels that birthed there. It was there. I was actually there earlier to witness how the screening has been done. Take a look. The MV Pintail. 
a Cypriot registered vessel that arrived in Nigeria on Sunday. It's carrying gypsum, a product used in making cement. And Nigeria's Port Health Services officials are boarding the ship to screen every crew member to be sure none has any symptom of the Ebola virus disease. The captain summons his crew to this small conference room on board the vessel for the screening. Port officials want to see what else is on board among the crew, so their temperatures are checked for anything abnormal, especially Ebola. Any abnormal temperature reading would be a potential red flag. And this is the second time health officials would be screening the crew since the ship bathed at the port. For every ship that arrives, port health is required and mandatorily boards every ship to give them a free pratique. What that means is clearance that they can get off the ship and that other agencies can board the ship, meaning that the health status of the ship and the crew has been certified. Now, because of the Ebola outbreak screening um, activities, in addition to that, we administer the primary screening form, which they fill out and a temperature check is done. Now, for any crew member who may be unwell or who may have a raised temperature, every terminal, like the terminal we're at now, has a clinic. And so we have trained them and we work closely with them. The Port Health Clinic is also located here. And then the passenger, the, sorry, the crew member is triaged. If it's an Ebola suspect case, then they're evacuated to the isolation center. Otherwise, they're treated medically. Ebola has largely been contained in Nigeria. Not a single person is known to be under surveillance for the virus across the country. But health officials say they are not taking chances. As long as other countries in the sub-region still have an outbreak, we're persistently at risk. Basically because you have passengers who still transit by air, by land and by sea. So we need to be sure that they're not bringing anything in and we need to be sure that there's no cross-border um, transmission. So for the ports, regardless of whether it's um, a ship that has passed through affected areas or not, the procedure is the same across board. But so far so good, nothing abnormal has been detected. They're still going to continue to take the temperature reading of the crew members until the ship leaves the port here in Nigeria. Arik Airline is set to resume flight operations to Banjul, the Gambia, October 1, after about two months of suspension due to the Ebola outbreak. The airline had suspended its operations to Gambia following the decision of the Gambian government to ban Nigerian carriers from operating into Banjul Airport. Managing Director of the airline, Chris Ndulue, who announced that uh, flights would commence from October 1, noted that the security and safety of air passengers and crew was a top priority to the airline. Ndulue said Arik would operate three weekly flights from both Lagos and Abuja to Banjul via Accra, Ghana, on Wednesday, Friday and Sunday. According to him, with the new schedule, the airline would be allowing the Banjul route to sell three market segments on one operated flight. Now, a senior medical officer in Liberia has put herself under quarantine for 21 days after one of her assistants died from the Ebola virus disease. Deputy Health Minister Benis Dan said she had no symptoms but wanted to take every precaution by deciding to go into quarantine. The minister, whose assistant died of the infectious disease on Thursday, said she had not come in contact with any other infected people apart from the office assistant who died this week. The chief doctor who represented Liberia at international Ebola conferences has also instructed his staff to stay at home for the same time period where they will be placed under observation for 21 days as a full incubation period of the virus. The World Health Organization, WHO, says more than 3,000 people have dried, died from Ebola in West Africa. Of the four nations affected by the Ebola outbreak, Liberia has been hit the hardest, with 3,458 people infected and 1,830 persons killed by the disease. That's according to data now released by the WHO last Saturday. We'll take a short break now. When we return, we'll look at other stories. New, the new thing in music is African music. It's fresh. It's very, very energetic. Hey, what's up, my people? They call me Two Face Edibia. And right here, right now, it's one love all the way from Afrima. Everybody, come out, come out, come out. 
Afrima Awards. Come out, one love. Yes, so. Open your eyes, spiritually. Free your mind from hate. Welcome back. The police command in Ekiti State says it has arrested 19 persons over the murder of a former Ekiti State chairman of the National Union of Road Transport Workers, Omar Lafe Adirie. Adirie was killed by some unidentified gunmen in his office along Ijigbo Street in Adoikite last Thursday. His killing is sequel to the violence which broke out in the state Thursday, where hoodlums attacked the APC secretariat in the state and destroyed houses and property. Adirie had been a staunch supporter of the governor-elect Ayodele Fayashe and had allegedly led hoodlums to disrupt a court proceeding where a judge was beating up. State Police Com uh, Public Relations Officer Victor Babayami confirmed the arrest to newsmen in Adoikiti on Monday but did not reveal the identity of those arrested. Babayami said the 19 are being questioned in respect of the killing but remained innocent until investigation proved otherwise. To business now, Minister of Mines and Steel Development Musa Sada Monday said the federal government of Nigeria was planning to establish fiscal policy regime for the solid mineral sector in the country. Sada, in a statement signed by the head of media and the ministry, Ambrose Momo, said plans were underway to get the regime of the sector to ensure that royalties, taxes and fees accrued from the mineral sector were paid into the sector's revenue. He said the decision was necessitated by the report of the first Nigerian Extractive Industries and Transparency Initiative audit of the solid mineral sector. According to him, the government's objective was to ensure that more production was carried out in the sector and corresponding taxes paid to government coffers. He added that various strategies were put in, have actually been put in place by the ministry to monitor the amount of royalties paid to government from mining operations. The Nigerian Deposit Insurance Corporation says uh, it will review the insurance coverage it provides for primary mortgage banks to ensure effective operations of, the na of that sector. NDIC Managing Director Omaru Ibrahim, while speaking at the opening of a two-day workshop for PMBs on Monday in Abuja, said the corporation is also reviewing the basis of premium of the PMBs in the country. The PMBs, by the way, are the primary mortgage banks. Now, he said, instead of using the flat rate, which was the initial practice, the corporation would introduce risk-based premium assessment system. This, he said, was obtainable with the money deposit banks. Ibrahim said, with the move, the corporation will be able to promote safer and best practices in the process. The best manned and managed institutions will have less premium burden on them. To the foreign scene now, one-time U.S.-based academic Ashraf Ghani has been sworn in as the new president of Afghanistan. The ceremony at the presidential palace in Kabul marked the country's first democratic transfer of power and opened a new era after the rule of Hamid Karzai, who was president since the Taliban regime was ousted in 2001. Ghani took an oath to abide by the country's constitution at a swearing-in cere swearing ceremony attended by up to 100 dignitaries. In his first speech as president, Mr. Ghani said he would work for long-term peace, promising to tackle corruption and make constitutional changes where necessary. To sports now, Nigerian pair of Esther Sunday and Onome AB have gotten the green light from their foreign outfit, Minsk of Belarus, to team up with their Super Falcons uh, teammate now at the forthcoming African Women Championship in Namibia. The duo are among the five overseas players yet to arrive in camp as the Super Falcons began preparations for the AWC. The Belarus women top flight outfit had earlier held out on allowing the Super Falcons players play any part in the CAF Senior Women Championship, which is not listed in FIFA calendar over concerns of destruction to its league activities. The Super Falcons are drawn in Group A of the championship alongside Ivory Coast, Zambia and host Namibia in the tournament holding from October 11th to 25th. That's it on News Now for now. We thank you very much for watching. We're back again later.